Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the Cheese Mobiles. Today I'm going to take you through marks five through nine. This is one of our iterations today where I'm driving both of the motors with large wheels and I got this nice pulsed uh, turret that I'm going to show you how to build. After the first iterations, I wanted to do some more tests with the large wheel. So I made a larger gap between the motor and the left wheel here. And then I'm going to attach two of them with a metal pole. I got that from a shrine near the Gerudo Desert. And then I squeezed the large wheels onto the motor, one for each of them, using a railing. And this is a little bit better climbing than what I showed at the end of the last video, with one large wheel for both motors. Here it is electrified. We can see that it has a pretty nice speed on the ground. Let's see how it climbs. It's not that good. And the reason for that is that the large wheels need to be squeezed as hard as possible against the motors. What it does do though is it passes the drop test and has pretty good handling. So pros for this one is it has good speed and good handling. Cons that it only has okay climbing and just okay braking. Now let's add some weapons. So what I wanted to do was make a pulsed beam by using a small angle. You want to aim for about 16 degrees, so I used stake nudging to align these heads. Now I'm going to hold both of the heads with the stake at the angle they're at already. Here you're seeing me attach the second stake to hold that other head. I want to get the dots aligned right on top of each other. That way I don't risk any twisting of the head as I attach it. Now that I've attached the emitter, I'll attach a third stake mimicking the angle of the aiming head because we want the beam to be parallel with the eyesight of the aiming head. And there you saw the emitter realigned with the stake. And if we rebuild it, everything will have that angle. And we've got a small angle pulser. Looks about the right angle. You want somewhere between 11 and 16 degrees. Now we can attach it to our build and see how it does. And we see that it's got pretty good pulsing. This is just three beams. But what I'm also testing here is how does the tank do? Am I able to stay in one position pretty well? And honestly, it's, it's pretty good. It's very similar to regular large wheels where you kind of have to balance front and back to stay in one position. It's just got a little more torque to it. The pros are you don't even need electricity for it to work and it's very mobile. And the cons are that it has okay looks and it doesn't have very good protection for Link. Bombs will get him. And this is where Winter from Discord showed this clip. Winter used large wheels to drive the axles of the motor instead of the motor body like I had, and you see it has a lot more speed. I saw how much torque this has and how well it climbs hills, and that shows that it can probably handle a heavier chassis, which got me very excited. And if they go downhill, you see that the large wheels drive the axles with that large gear ratio and goes over the speed limit. If you can use a large chassis, then why not the gloom dredger, huh? So, I aligned the axles and motors to fit the back and front of the gloom dredger well, made sure that the wheels were all aligned, and I'll show all of this in my build tutorial. And then I you, I used item culling, which you need previous to patch 1.2. You can also use stake nudging, 
or gravity nudging, which will be linked in the description. And here you see I have my axle lined up for the front of the chassis. Now that I've attached these two, let's check that it can drive. I'm just going to do the regular EV vehicle with this, see if it even moves the gloom judger. And notice how I have the motor bodies attached to the gloom dredger because I plan on using the large wheels to drive the axles of the motor like Winter showed. And we see that we get great speed going downhill like I would expect. And we have good speed on level ground too. It looks pretty cool as well. I'm not even going to test this going uphill though because I know it's not going to be able to do it, especially with the heavy gloom judger chassis. So the pros are that now we have the gloom judger and it looks great and it has pretty good speed. Here I'm trying to use the small wheels, it's not working very well. The cons are that it's bad at climbing though and it's bad at braking. So I think we need to work on using large wheels on these axles. Anyway, this one's going to go in the dump. A quick tip here is how to combine the U-block and the gloom dredger chassis. The way to do it is to use two stake nudges and you can pull the, the U-block into the chassis a little bit. Like you saw me there. Here's how I have the stakes connected. And this is a really nice chassis because uh, it gives Link almost all sides uh, blast protection. So the bomb flowers on the ground won't get him, and enemies won't get him. Now, we're gonna optimize our build by squeezing the large wheel. And I'm doing it with this technique. You attach one stake to the axle of a wheel, and then you attach a cart, and you pull the axle all the way up on the wheel by uh, the attachments with the stake. And when that axle is squeezed all the way to the edge, you can then attach it directly to the motor body and get a super tight squeeze of the motor onto the axle. That way it has the best friction and has the best uh, grip and torque. Here you see me attached to the motor body there. And when we grab it, you'll see that it's pushing against that axle really hard. See how it's kind of at an angle now? Things are exaggerated when you grab with Ultra Hand and they settle when you let go. But this will be an issue that comes up later actually. But this seems to work pretty well. The spacing didn't uh, work for me to be able to drive the axle of the rear motor. So I was just using a small wheel to see if it did anything. The large wheel here is getting caught on the front of the gloom dredger. Here I stake nudge the wheel down a little bit to make a small gap, that way it's not pressing so hard on the axle, because that can actually deform the wheels and snap things off at the wrong angle. So I gave a small gap as you see here. And let's do a drop test to see how it works. So we were at the water temple while we were working on that. We're going to drop down now to Lanayru. And let's see if anything snaps off. I'm curious whether these axles uh, and large motors will snap off if they hit anything hard. Looks like nothing. See, something should have broken there, right? But nothing. Looks kind of like a sports car. Well, on this version, we've got pretty good torque, and it's very durable as we saw. Some cons though, are that it's pretty low to the ground, so it's going to be difficult to go over rocks. And two large wheels would probably be better than the small wheel in the back, so we need to adapt for that. Let's add a second large wheel, and we'll probably get better torque that way. So again, we're going to squeeze the axle of that large wheel. And I've attached it to the back now, kind of at an angle so it doesn't hit the Gloom Dredger chassis. And yeah, this thing wants to move. So I say, let's take this down on a drop test as well. 
Yeah, look at that speed. Ready. I used a water globule above Link. Because, uh, actually... It's just a way to attach, like, a turret on the top. Whoa, something should have broken off there. Alright. Well, it's got great speed, but as you see, the axles get twisted a little bit. They're getting pushed by the motors, and it doesn't have that great torque, probably because the Gloom Judger chassis is so heavy. So pros of this, it's very fast. And it's very fun, honestly, on, on ground. It goes pretty quickly. The cons, though, are that it can cause the axles to warp, and it has kind of bad climbing. But we're getting there. Like this is this is a good design. At this point, Blaze Alchemist tried this as well, using large wheels on the axles of the motor, and has pretty similar results here, right? Really good speed. And with Blaze's lighter chassis instead of the Gloom Dredger, Blaze can actually climb up hills like this. You have to snake a little bit to actually make it to the top. Going straight up like this will cause it to stall. But something else that can happen by pushing the axles is that you can warp these uh, the axles in general and sometimes can snap off the wheels. So with that, I think I'm going to go for the motor body to have better torque and not risk the um, axle warping, but still apply it to the Gloom Dredger chassis and see what we can do. Well, that's going to do it for today's video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed all these designs and the incorporation of the Gloom Dredger. I'm definitely excited to move forward with this, use the Gloom Dredger, get lots of torque with the motor bodies, and see what kind of tank I can make. Thanks for watching, everyone.